And in section 14.2, um, we're going to, to learn about one-sided limits. And so our objective is basically just to find one-sided limits. Um, so I'm going to ask you to consider this function here, f of x, who, and the graph is shown for us there in green. Um, as x is approaching 4 from the right side, f of x is approaching what, um, what y value? Okay, so if we're talking about um, approaching from the right side, so we've got here, you will notice this is where x is 4, all along this vertical line. So if we're approaching it from the right, we notice that y is there then going to be approaching um, 2. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna, we're going to look at the same graph, and this time we're going to consider um, what's happening as x is approaching 4 from the left side. So again, um, here is where x is 4, all along this line, and as we're approaching it from this side, from the left side, what is y approaching? And it appears to be approaching negative 1 in this case. Now, um, let's go back for a minute. When we are approaching from, from the right side, then this is actually written as the limit of f of x as x, appro x approaches 4 from the, uh, from the right side. So that's, that's what we're going to call our right-hand limit. Okay, And this little plus that you see here means that we want it from the right side. Okay, And then... Let's go forward here on this one, and this time this is going to be written as the limit of f of x as x is approaching 4 from the left side. Okay, And again, the negative is going to tell us that we are looking at it from the left side, and that's going to be called our left-hand limit. So um, you notice the limit from um, the left and right, are, uh, they're different. So what we've learned in previous sections is that that means that the limit does not exist. Um, Okay, so so the limit. So basically, what that means is that the limit of f of x as x approaches four does not exist. However, the limit um, of f of x as x approaches four from the the right hand limit does exist. It's two, and the left hand limit here does exist. It's negative one. They just so happen to be different, meaning that this does not exist. Okay, here we have an example. Um, we're going to work through, and uh, you can do this using uh, your calculator, or so let me pull up my calculator for a minute. Um, so you can do this using your calculator, or you can also use those um, properties that we've talked about so far. So let's go through and use our properties, and then we'll also um, use our calculator in a minute. So with the properties, we could rewrite this as um, the square root. Uh -oh. Let me wait on my calculator for a second. Okay, here we go. So we could write this as the square root of the limit. We've already got our square root. This is um, the properties of limits that's going to allow me to do this. Okay. Um, so once I have it here, then I know that this... 2 minus x is just a polynomial. So what that means is that I can actually plug in um, 2 there to find that um, that limit is just going to produce a 2. So I get the, um, I'm sorry, I would get a 0 there. I'll plug in a 2 here, giving me a 0 there. So the, the, the limit of um, 2 minus x, the function 2 minus x as x approaches 2 from the negative side, I just plug in 2, and that gives me a 0, giving me the square root of 0 plus, and we have the limit of a constant, negative 3, and so we know that's just going to produce a negative 3. So we've got the square root of 0 um, minus 3 is going to give me negative 3. So it looks like, um, in this case, that the limit is going to be negative 3. So let's try it using a calculator and see if the calculator gives us the same thing. And let's clear that out. 
and I've got square root 2 minus x. And then minus 3. And I'm going to do zoom 6. Okay. Oh, we've got more than one graph going on here. Let me turn that off. Okay, that's off, and let's go back to our graph here. Okay, so here we see our graph, and you notice that um, our domain, and we should know this, so let's go back over here a little, a little bit. Um, we should know, since you have the square root, you know that your domain of this, what's in, inside your, in your radicand, 2 minus x, has to be greater than or equal to 0, telling us that x has to be less than or equal to Two. So this is our domain here, and so when you go back to your graph that we're looking at, you see that um, you see you see that domain of x is less than or equal to two um, because it uh, it starts at negative two and then moves toward, to the left there. Uh, so we can let's take a little bit off of this graph. And let's go x max since the domain is we can just change that to five. Um, let's make that negative 5 and we'll make this positive 5 and look at the graph now and you get a little better graph there okay so um, we're going to be approaching it you notice here from from the left side we're looking for the left hand limit and uh, that makes sense considering the restrictions on our domain here and then also by looking at graph we could not approach it from the right side because the the function is not defined there at that point at those points um, so if we go to our let's see our make sure we're in ask mode we are so I'm going to go to my table and I'm going to plug in some values um, and I'm going to approach to so I'm going to start with 1.9 okay and then I'm going to 1.99, 1.999, okay, and then I'll go ahead and enter 2. Okay, so it does look like here that we're also approaching negative 3. So in this case, the limit of uh, this function as x approaches 2, the, the left-hand limit, is going to be negative 3. All right. So when we are computing left-handed, or when we're computing one-sided limits, all the results um, about limits from the previous section, properties of limits, those are still going to hold true. Um, and you saw that we just used those properties in the, in the example that I worked through. Limits of polynomial functions and the limit theorem are also valid um, when x approaches c is replaced by x is approaching c um, from the left or from the right. So using your left-hand limits and your right-hand limits. So you can still use all of those properties, the limit function, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the limit theorem, and um, to, to help you evaluate those. Okay, here's another example, and this is going to be our final example. Um, I'm sorry, it's not. We're going to work one, one th through one more example after this. Um, so we, again, could use the calculator or we can use our limit theorem, so our limit properties. So I could change this. No, this is, um, we have a quadratic in the radicand. So you know that 16 minus x squared is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is one of those that you actually have to do the test values on to see. Um, but if you graph it, you can also find, pretty easily see what the domain is there. Um, so we are approaching 4 from the right-hand side. Uh, so it might help us, uh, let's, let's actually use a calculator this time to graph it. And um, you can probably then see what the domain is going to be for you. So this time we're going to have 16 minus x squared. Okay. Change my window. I'm going to change this to negative 5. Graph that. Okay, so you see that your domain happens to be between, it appears to be between um, negative 4 and uh, positive 4 here in this case. Now we want to know what happens as x is approaching 
So we have something that looks, we know that our graph looks something like this. And we want to know what's happening as um, x is approaching 4. Actually, this right here is wrong. This should be 4 from the, this should be like that. Okay, we want to approach 4, um, the left-hand limit. Okay, so there's where x equals 4, and we want to approach it from the left-hand side. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. So we're going to get really, really close to 4, meaning that we're going to start with um, See. meaning that we are going to start with um, 3.9, 3.99, 3.999, and uh, see what kind of values we get for those. So, okay. let's go over here and, okay, so we're going to enter 3.9. Three point nine nine and three point nine 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 and then we'll go ahead and enter four. Okay, so um you notice when you enter four you get zero. Um and I had an error here. Hit two threes. It should be three point nine nine. Okay, so it appears that we're approaching zero in um in this case. And now if we go back and we actually use the properties, then we could go through and say, okay, this is a square root. Um, change this to the limit. And a 16 minus x squared without the square root is just a polynomial. So we can just plug in the 4 there. And when we plug in the 4, we get 16 minus. And that's going to be the square root of 0 which is going to give me zero. So in both cases, I find that the, the limit um, of this function as x is approaching uh, four from the left side is going to be zero. So in conclusion, the way you use this, okay, you've got three types of limits. You've got your left-hand limit, you've got your right-hand limit, and you've got your two-sided limit. Um, if your left-handed and right-handed limit are the same, that is uh, these two, then this will exist. Okay, you're two-sided. So this and this both are equal to the same number. So it's both equal to L. Then your two-sided limit will exist. If one is equal to L, the other is equal to M, so that's a case sort of like this here you have going on, then the two-sided limit will not exist. And one last example here. Um, this time we are we, we're going to use this graph and we're going to find the uh, different limits. So the first one, um, I am talking about um, x approaching five from the left hand side. So here is where x is five. Okay, and I want to approach it from the left hand side. So if I'm approaching from the left hand side, then my limit there is going to be at four. Okay, now if I want to approach that same number but from the right hand side, I still get 4. So what that means is that since the, if I approach it from the left hand side and from the right hand side, they're both the same, that means that this is equal to 4. Okay, um, now let's look at 3. So if I have x is 3, is along here. If I approach it from the left, then I end up with 3. If I approach it from the right, I end up with 5. So in this case, we know that the, the limit of uh, this function, f of x, uh, as x approaches 3 would not exist. And that's all I have for section 14.2a.